if you look at the Buddhist meditations around compassion, they say the very first thing you've get, got to do if you want to bring more compassion into the world is to start by being compassionate to yourself. So that's where we're going to start. So what I'd like you to do is just have a little think and think, first of all, if you've got a lowish score, why aren't I kind to myself? Why am I not forgiving of myself? What is it about me that makes me think, you know, I don't deserve this. And secondly, would you be that hard on anyone else? And thirdly, is that working for you? Is that, is that a helpful, useful way of being anymore? And is it helpful and useful for anybody else? So just have a think about those questions. You know, why am I doing this? Would I treat anybody else like that? And is it really helpful? For me or anybody else? Then what I'd like you to do is to follow me on this guided meditation visualization. So make yourself comfy, obviously stop driving that truck, stop, uh, put that AK-47 down or whatever else you're doing. <laughs> if you're going to be doing this, stay focused on this, take care of yourself. And I might come back to the waterfall, why not? People like the waterfall. There we are. So take a few moments, first of all, just to breathe. And then I'd like you to take a few moments to think about one of two people. The first person, you have options on this, or, or you can have both. The first person is someone who you would say is an exemplar, a paragon of someone who has really good, strong, high self-compassion. Not arrogant, not full of themselves. They're just very at peace with who they are. Just being who they are, imperfect, just human. Think about who that would be. Now, it could be somebody you know, like me. Or it could be somebody you you know read about, like Gandhi or Martin Luther King. Or it could be a child that you know just doesn't have a concept of not loving themselves or liking themselves. Could be an animal, you know, if your dog really likes itself. And 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 sometimes liking ourselves is not so much an active thing. It's just that's just how it is. It's not really a convers not a question it's just a given so it could be somebody you know personally but it could be somebody in history or someone famous or it could even be someone you read about in a storybook it doesn't really matter it's just getting in touch with what that would be like that person, that animal, that creature or if you have some relationship to some spiritual tradition religious or spiritual it could be someone from that so it could be a prophet it could be jesus could be god could be buddha could be allah muhammad whoever it could be the if you're you know not religious not spiritual but you have a sense of uh, science forces you know it could be the gravitational force of the universe just something that for them they're just very clear about the way they are is absolutely fine maybe drop down on the um, comments the people you've chosen and it could be you know if it's just you know your mate Alan just put Alan because that may help people who are going oh who would it be you know if they see the Dalai Lama or 
then we go oh yeah I can think of that so do drop that down if you've got a moment come out of your gentle reverie and I said the second person the second person you could also choose could be your higher self so the you that you've been in touch with in moments phases or periods of your life or it could be the you that you hope one day to fully inhabit but spend some moments just really thinking about who that would be either you or someone else So we've got the lovely Jane and God. What a great thing to be name checked in this list. Pippa in BBC Radio Bristol. Shout out to Pippa. Because it's quite cool to be chosen. Because that says that you have demonstrated consistently to someone and, and Fleur's using the word wisdom that's quite an interesting word to use around it because there is a wisdom that naturally comes and it's not it's not that they're they know everything and they're perfect that but there's a wiseness that comes from being good with yourself independent of how perfect imperfect you are <laughs> Louise is happy Cat is even happy when she poops. Well, who isn't? Uh, Christine. <laughs> uh, Anna's friend, Christine. Fabulous. Might be Christina, based on Anna's name. And then what I'd like you to do is to imagine that person is right there in front of you. right there in front of you and it's just looking at you but they're looking at you through the eyes of someone who is incredibly compassionate to themselves and also compassionate to others so we've got uh, Renara's Johnny thinking about Mandela and George thinking about Tessa and Louise thinking about Jerry and Mary thinking about Pippa <laughs> so whoever they are just see them in front of you and really get a sense of them looking at you from that place of self-compassion feel what that feels like to be in the presence of that so if it's Mandela you know you know enough about him so that if he was there and he took a moment to be with you how would he be there? because he would be pretty consistent that's why you've chosen these people then I'd like you to take a moment and just kind of walk around in your mind and to step into them and see yourself through their eyes so be Tessa, Jerry, Mandela, Peppa, Christina just look at yourself through their filter for their world map what, what do they see as they look at you who do they see as they look at you what do they see then walk back to you in your mind so you're still looking at them And in a few moments, they're going to say something to you, something really important, something that's essential that you hear from them at this moment in time. Knowing that not only are they wise, they've got an insightfulness. They know you. They've seen you at your best, at your worst. But they're still good with it. Just listen to what they say to you. What advice, what suggestions, what comments, what coaching, what gestures, what conversations 
What communications do they have to give you right now? Really listen. Hear them say that. What would they say to you to remind you of something that's really important for you right now? Listen and connect and feel what that feels like to hear that. Breathe that in. Really connect deeply with that. Breathe that in. Hear that in your head. Hear it in your heart. Hear it in your tummy. Our three major nervous systems. And as you do, just feel what that feels like. Also notice if there's any parts of you that have friction with that, that go, oh, I can't, I can't let that in. If that's the case, that's absolutely fine. Allow that part of you to also have that conversation with this person in front of you. So every aspect of you is acknowledged, spoken to, of this person and do drop down in the comments when you've got a moment what the messages are what do they say to you and what you'll find when you read the comments is most people are needing to hear the same thing so do drop it down in the comments Then what I'd like you to do is just to step into the future with this person, this mentor of self-compassion being with you every step of the way, beside you, in front of you, and particularly showing up large in those moments when you really need it. Saying these phrases like, you are enough. Stand up for yourself. You are worthy. You are unique. You are good enough. You are ready for this next new adventure. There is only one of you. You're doing so well. You are worth so much. Take care of you. You are enough. You are a wise person who has been through so much. You are a light in the world. You've done your work on that. You can leave it now. Show your energy. The world needs people like you. They love you. You're natural at what you do. You are complete. I'm just reading the comments there, but we can notice some themes coming through about being, you are you, you are enough, you are unique, there's nobody else like you, the world needs you, you've done what you need to do on that, you can let it go. The world will benefit from Louise, who is rested and refreshed. <laughs> so take yourself into the future and just feel what it feels like to be in those places where sometimes neurologically you sneak back into old patterns. But now have that mentor pop up and just get your attention and remind you of these things. You are wonderful. You are enough. You are complete. You are you. You are unique. They love you. You're natural at what you do. 
you have a gift, you have a purpose. When you have a purpose and when you are in touch with the special uniqueness of you, there will never be another you, then you can start to move through the stuff. Remembering who you are, awakening, reminding yourself. Nelson Mandela says, you are special. So feel what it feels like to be in those moments. When you most need it, to have them just appear, to have the conversation just flow through you that says, you've got this, you're enough, you're good, you're wonderful, you're unique. Now, does that mean everybody in the world will see that? Well, if you look at people who are successful, Mozart, Beethoven, the Beatles, Elvis, Donald Trump, as an example, does everybody like these people? Not even everyone likes Beethoven or Mozart or dogs. So is it okay that people have different maps? doesn't mean that your version of who you are necessarily needs to change. This new version. As we navigate through people's different versions, and a lot of what we're doing is we're stepping into their old experience of being a child and not having what they want and being angry and upset and not functioning. You know what it's like when you hang around people who have got a lot of stuff sorted, wise people that you've been mentioning. What's it like to hang around them? Well, it's just easier because you're not bumping into their noise and their you know, past that they're dragging around with them all the time. You can focus on other things. What does it feel like for you to be that? For people, imagine this, right? Five, ten years from now, somebody bumping into you. Who knows you? And, so, and they say to you, I've been watching you. I'm amazed at how much wisdom you bring. Stuff that would bend me out of shape. And you just deal with it in this very kind of self-kind way. How do you do that? I wish I could. And you say, <laughs> it's funny. Because a few years back, this wasn't me, but now I've done it so much, so often. It's just who I am. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten it didn't used to be me, but I am completely lovable. So allow yourself to take these important learnings that naturally come from connecting in a deep and powerful way to what is after all your inner wisdom. You chose these mentors because you're smart and wise enough to know that's who you need to connect with. When we generate a mentor, when we think about somebody, what we're doing actually is digging into our inner wisdom, going, yeah, that's the kind of person I feel I feel this is the kind of person that should leave me because this is who I want to emulate because I'm not completely happy being the way I am at the moment. It doesn't feel right. That's what you're fundamentally saying. The way that I've been managing my self-compassion isn't good enough for me and I want better. So feel what that feels like. And then as we bring ourselves to the end of this exercise, which is more than an exercise, a lot more because what you're doing is experientially shifting your nervous system, your intention and your expectations of the future. To drop a comment saying what you've experienced, it's been useful for you. To say thank you to somebody else on the group 
to connect with somebody else on the group just saying hi thanks for being here because the more we connect with others particularly when other people have heard some of the stuff that's going on in our you know unconscious minds rubbish that we tell ourselves and they're still okay to talk with us that reminds us that this is just noise it's not who we are it's just something we've got used to doing and the more of course we connect with these ideas as Kate says through neuroplasticity just connecting with it and interestingly neuroplasticity you don't have to repeat things lots sometimes it can be a one hit that changes everything it's really about the significance of the neurological activation so like you can go to a gig and be blown away by an amazing performance that you remember forever you're only at the gig once you can have your heart broken once and that can stick around for a while we can learn one shot learnings as long as the experience is powerful enough So carry on talking to each other, share your experiences, connect with people, recognize that when you talk about stuff that's you know been getting in your way, people don't see it as such a big thing as maybe when you quietly hold it in. I'm going to leave you with a waterfall for a minute and I'll close the feed in a few minutes to carry on leaving comments. See you later guys on the next one. One, two, three.